It is a mystery. Resurrection. You know what they say. The third strike is one. But I'm not done yet. Don't think that I can't knock you out. We await your return, warrior. Day two. Now you got audio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Almacon Day Two. We are here live. It is one in the a p.m. a.m. Well, yeah, but what if, <laughs> Who knows? The wedding on Smash goes, but we're right. here live. We're here to show off the greatest Eunice players in the area right now. We're going to be doing round robin tournament. We got five entrants, and right now we're going to make sure that everything's all tight and crispy for all of y'all coming up. Twenty dollar pop bonus. Yeah. Thank and you very much for so, the pop bonus. That's going to be awesome. So hopefully we, that brings out the best out of these players. Now, coming from you, how much does a pop bonus really incentivize you winning? Uh, it definitely helps a lot. I mean, any sort of pop bonus is nice, um, especially since that's just extra money that's added to the pop for the winner. So it adds a bit of challenge for uh, players. If you never had, like, a motivation, I mean, that's definitely a motivation to have. Not everybody's always driven by money, so, I mean, there's that aspect as well. Some people are just in it for, like, the competition. But having that extra gift on top is actually really cool. It's always a so. good good price point, and I'm yeah. glad to have uh, sponsored all these pop bonuses. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Not it's a, really cool. Uh, looking forward to the matches that we're going to see. Um, and honestly, just the rest of the games this weekend, because, uh, what, we still have uh, Smash Bros, Cross Tag Battle. Uh, actually, Cross Tag is after this. Correct. And then Smash Bros is going to be after Cross Tag later today. Yep. And then tomorrow, still Soul Calibur 6 and Street Fighter 5. Correct. So that's going to be cool to see. It's going to be a heck of an event. Right, exactly. Uh, it looks like our first combatants are up and they are ready. Okay. We got ourselves Hyper Crasher. Right. Fa versus Noctis. Noctis. Should He's gone. You can't see Noctis because he teleported away. But, so, from Hyper Crasher, I imagine we're going to see Wagner. Yeah, they already got the character selected out there. Wagner versus Gordell. It'll be an interesting matchup. Uh, Noctis is going to have to play a really strong neutral game here. Uh, and definitely when Vorpal is going to help, which is easier because Gordell steals uh, Grid. Uh, for those that don't know, Grid is at the bottom. Gives you additional traits, some uh, cancels, and varying things that you can do with it depending upon the character. Wagner, however, now she's got a lot of plus frames and a lot of her moves. She's really safe and pretty easy to set play with so oh nice throw into the corner there like I was talking about there earlier Gordo just stole a little bit of grit at the bottom just for throwing every throw he does he steals grit it is crazy right it's so important for him this game definitely has many layers I've been recently trying to get into it keyword try yeah. and there's just Eunice is its own beast that I figured out right there's nothing that I could compare to me personally uh -huh. and it's oh. like I went in tried to play it like third strike got blown up in the process because there's so many layers to this game. Yikes. Well, yeah, I mean, you can find some success in playing a really strong neutral game, and honestly, Hyper Crasher is not allowing Noctis to put that on display here, just stealing turn after turn. Nice throw again, stealing some grid. He's got Vorpal here, but drops the combo. Ooh, big punish. So you here see comes some, Noctis. Yeah, there we go. Bring nice. Way to turn it around. 
See, sometimes it takes just that one mistake, and he had a lot of meter on deck too. He also had Vorpal, so he could have chain shifted if he messed something up there, uh, which is kind of like for you Guilty Gear players, sort of like a roaming cancel. You kind of take your turn back and another opportunity. All right, oh, it gets opened up low here. Restand at the force function here. And sword is buffed. Now, Wagner has a unique ability where she can charge her shield and sword, and her moves get a little bit, uh, something extra off of it. Uh, so like her shield, she additionally kind of gets, uh, if I remember correctly, shield gets uh, uh, like a, a guard point off of it, and then sword just gives you additional damage. Um, so there's that feature for Wagner there. And that's safe, unfortunately. So get blown up for that, but get tossed. See, that's really nice from Noctis here is that he's taking advantage of the grid. Uh, it's just got to be able to use it. He could have shielded here a bit. Nice chain shift, but gets thrown anyways. One more combo to do it, and yeah, just wake up. Oh, oh the magic that was pixel. close. Wow. That was really Making close. Making that work. <laughs> All right, turning it yeah, out. Nice drill here. I was kind of expecting a Grim Reaper from Gordo here. That's the signature, just giant big swing scythe going halfway across the screen. Ooh, dropped the combo. He's going to get tossed for that trouble there. Nice grid steal here. All right, nice. And now he should have Vorpal Gordo. Taking advantage here, and plenty of meter on deck too. So if he wants to throw on some damage, he certainly could. Ooh, get drilled. Tried to assault, but nice read from Noctis here to get the anti-air. Nice overhead. That's the thing about Gordo is that he takes up that giant space, but it takes so much time for his moves to come out. And because of that, Wagner can definitely take advantage by running up, just pressing her safe buttons, and just blowing up Gordo because as fast as normal, I believe, is a uh, uh, six frames, I think it is. Uh, someone could correct me on that if you want. I don't have the data right in front of me here. But I think that's his uh, 2A, I believe, is like his fastest normal. All right, nice corner carry here. And already in the lead with Grid. That's gonna be really important. I keep bringing that up at the bottom of the screen there because that's another layer of the game. Uh, Cause even if you are behind, like you get rewarded for playing really good defense. Uh, and grid, when you have it and you have Vorpal, you can take some of that grid, build meter with it, or you can, you know, cancel your moves like I was saying earlier with the chain shift, which we've seen a couple times here. Here comes Ooh. Hyper Crasher, but here comes Noctis in yep. return. See, it's only going to take a couple combos. And that's interesting about these two players is that Noctis is definitely, oof, a very aggressive player for Gordo. Um, but you see him take advantage of, like, every button that Gordo has. And Noctis is very knowledgeable about the game, so he definitely knows when it's his turn, what, what's the most advantageous for him. Ooh, nice try on the assault. Good blocks from Hyper Crasher here, shielding and get backed off. Ooh, yep, got to watch out for that. That's something that Noctis likes to do a lot on his wake up. He'll do the command throw when he sees you assaulting or even just charging in like Wagner was there. Oh, big overhead, not paying attention. Not yep. this. He answers back. Very competitive. Yeah, ooh, see, that's what I was talking about there. Wagner does have the ability to just kind of close that gap before the normal comes out from Gordo. Ooh, get caught with the overhead. Oh, but doesn't continue the combo. That's unfortunate there. Because that could have been really big. He could have built up enough grid to, t oh, never mind. He got the Vorpal anyway, so. All right, shield charge. He's got the guard point there. And Noctis does not bite. Trapped in the corner. Yep. Steal some of that grid, change shift so he can do the EX, pop on some extra damage, and he just refilled basically what he used anyway, so he doesn't care. Exactly. Alright, loses Vorpal this time around, but look at all that grid he's got anyways. He's gonna get it back later. Nice shield to take advantage of that jump in. <sighs> Drop the combo, but it doesn't do matter. Alright. Noctis takes it up two to nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Advantage Noctis. Yep. Oh no, try to catch him. I wonder what that was. I think it was. Uh. Shoot, I forgot the name of it. I know what I'm thinking of, but like I forgot the name of the move. Oh, a couple trades here. Working in Noctis' favor. Just look at the damage. Stole some grid there too. 
Nice. Mortal slide into that. Ooh, nice catch with the drill here, getting an anti-air off of that. Nice conversion. Has shield buff on, but it's not going to matter because of Grim Reaper. All right. Nice throw tech there. Real smart stuff here by Hypercrash. A little bit risky, though, because, Seven. I mean, had he done a uh, command throw, he would have been scooped for that. Set point. So yeah. what do you believe that not, uh, Hypercrasher has to pull out in order to to basically turn this entire thing around. Well, he's got to close the gap, right? Like, as long as he's in Gordo's face, Gordo's going to have a really hard time just kind of backing off. Like, Gordo has to shield in these situations where he's in the corner. Uh, but, you know, he needs to be a little bit aware that uh, Noctis is waking up doing command throws or, or just regular throws. He's just not really paying attention to, like, these open opportunities that he has, so. All right. Ugh. This is not a good look. He's got meter here. That should close it out, unfortunately. Noctis, 3-0 over Hyper Crasher. That's really tough stuff there. I would have liked to see seen uh, Hyper Crasher kind of bully more on uh, Noctis. Because, I mean, honestly, Wagner does have that ability to close the gap, bully, and, uh, you know, take advantage of the scenario. All right, so next up, I'm not sure who we're going to have next, but we'll find out in a second here. But yeah, I mean, it was interesting set. Oh, see, we're trying to figure out how to get the cable plugged into the TV up on the big screen here so everybody can watch here at AlmaCon 2019. It's a nice little con out here in Alma, Michigan. Uh, I didn't know that this was the Scotland of the USA. I'm, I'm really surprised by that. I found that out by looking up the event. It's like, all right, we're here. It's a nice little quiet town just south of uh, uh, CMU. So there's that. Um, they're, like I said, the Smash tournament is going to be coming up later today. So a lot of the Smash players I hear from the CMU area are going to be coming down here uh, to play some games, which is going to be awesome to see. Of course, uh, some of the proceeds from the tournament, some of the entry fee, will go to a charity as well for uh, helping out veterans. So that's really awesome as well. This whole event is uh, charity-based as well, too, which is really cool. Had Johnny Young Bosch out here. We have a bunch of voice actors visiting. Um, yeah, the, that's the signs behind me here. It's got some signs of the voice actors. Am I good to go? Yeah, I can play. All right, I got to go play, so I'll be back. Let me mute this. Hello, boy. my mic on real quick. Hello, hello. Um, it is I, the boy with the ponytail, the one, the true, prodigal, spam 5C2A with Gordo himself, is I, Noctis. Um, for those watching and for those supporting the stream, thank you so much, guys. It means a lot to the people who run this event. Wonderful host, wonderful people. I had to sit down with the host who's going to be here in a hot second. Um, so right now, we have a solid match between Frosted Place and Zero. Both very, I won't say, they're veteran players. This game's a little iffy. Mika versus Akatsuki is going to be an interesting match. Let's see how it starts. I don't know if this is a bond check. This looks like an actual match. Uh, this is probably, yeah, this is an actual match. All right, so right now, we got Zero on the aggressive. Frosted Flakes on knowing how to deal. Um, for those at home who don't know, one of Akatsuki's main strength is going in and staying in. 
And as you can see, Rhino Zero is playing that very well with Vitatsu and the EX Fireball. Reset neutral, go for the Vitatsu. That's a perfect. Slap some Vex tape on that, because that's a lot of damage. Right now, oh, we got a good charge there. To start the round off. Frosted Flakes going back on the offensive now. Good shielding from Zero. However, Frosted Flakes said none of that today, and he's back on the offensive. So, right now, as um, solo host, I can't really be asking my co-host or whoever I, who I'm staying with questions right now. But um, one thing, if I can see any adaptation going on right now, is I feel like both these players are playing very solid neutral. However, the main issue between them right now is matchup and experience. While, I do play at, while they do play at tournaments a lot, ooh, nice EXTP to catch that anti here and run up grab. Very solid adaptions right now from Frosted Flakes, I feel. Nice throw break. One, two, three, four. And it's looking really solid right now. Ah, one, two, three. One, two, three. And that is it's one to one right now. This is match point. Anyone's game right now. And here we start off with Zero's offense. Looking really solid. Drops the combo, however. Frosted Flakes who went back on the offense. Very solid neutral going on, back and forth, back and forth. A lot going on. So, oh, nice call from the XCP. Very solid play here. Are we gonna get the corner carry? No, he's trying to reset neutral here. Nice guard thrust. Not a, uh, not a lot seen from that so far in this tournament. Guilty in his charge. So, I know, ooh, nice orb break. Did not know he could crush projectiles. That's interesting. So, oh, we can DP again. We got a lot of DPs thrown around the set. Oh, one, two, three, and Frost and Flakes takes. Frost Flakes takes the first game. All right, so, so from that match alone, I feel like one of the main things Zero might need to work on is so his adaptation right now. It's mainly right now matchup unfamiliarity at this point, but. That's probably just the main issue, and right now, we got the second round going. But Frosted Flakes is a very knowledgeable player. He's very good at adapting. So we're gonna see where this goes from here. Meek going offensive. Got the corner carry. Just reset neutral. Oh, nice parry, nice parry. Follow up with the Tatsu combo, counter hit. So this is gonna do a little extra damage, folks. Try to contest with Tatsu. Mika's not having any of that. No, no, no. She said, I I am too fast for you. And it's looking like this might kill. And, oh no, it drops. It drops. It's crazy. And there's Frosty. Looking very dedicated over there, folks. There's an intense match between the two. And who knows what's going to happen. Zero looks like he's motivated right now for those at home playing Devil May Cry. Not watching this. Better pay attention. That's besides the point right now. Ooh, nice DP call out. Vita to the contest. Ooh, nice one shield. Ooh, that is really good right now. One of the few points you can actually shield Mika. But, once again, Mika's not having any of that. It keeps the corner. Ooh, counter poke. Two, three, four. It's looking really good. Doesn't follow. Oh, with the run out back into the corner. It's looking really good right now. We gotta see what's going on though here. Because we don't know anything about this right now. Oh, geez. Magic Pixel, Commentator's Curse. Let's see what Zero Syndicate can pull out of this. Or just Zero, for those who don't know. Looking really solid. Oh, with the drop kick. 2 0 Frost. 2-0, Frosted Flakes, 0 Syndicate. All right, so we're going into our final match. Looking okay, really solid right now. Um, right now, we are good set, as previously stated. Sorry about that, you got a little distracted. But right now, ooh, standing light to contest the back. I forgot to name that move, but oh, DP Fallout. Katsuki's looking really solid here, or zero. Right now, this is still anyone's game. We've seen miracles before, folks, and this is no shy of one right now. Joe's looking very dedicated into his craft right now, finishing with Bitatsu, close, the, close that match, 
close that round. My apologies, folks. Solid neutral. Fireball. Another fireball. You said eat those. Oh, a little slow on the parry there. However, from that point, I can see it. I can understand why he'd parry there. Feeling like he was going to do something big. Ooh. Good throw break. Akatsuki's got a lot of grip to spend. I wonder what he's going to do with it. Ooh, DP call out. Okay, okay. Another DP. We're just playing disrespectful tonight out here, folks. Counter hit both sides. Another throw break. <coughs> this is looking mighty disrespectful. But that doesn't matter because out here at Almacon, we're doing one of these. Ooh, standing light. One, two, three, and this might kill. Or commentator's curse strikes again. Commentator's curse strikes again. He doesn't spend the bar to kill. Obi Katsu, chain shift, doesn't do anything with it. Or maybe an input error. Never know. Oh, EX command grab. They catch him from a pretty hefty distance. There's a DP with. Looking really good right now. One, two, three, four. Frost effects is working out perfect right now. Let's see how long he keeps that up, though. Oh, and it's gone, folks. Ooh, EXDP to catch him. And a parry follow up. That was a pretty nice call there. So, right now, it's a pretty intense match. It's looking like it's towards Zero Zinnikin's favor. It's just a tiny little bit. However,. Like I said before, and I'll continue to say, oh, wait, I may have spoken too soon. Commentator's Curse. Commentator's Curse, 3 0. Frost Blaze takes it. Alright. That, that was a pretty good match. Pretty wonderful match. Uh, so, one thing about that match I really liked is how both sides were applying neutral into their gameplay. Um, one thing I did notice, though, is Frost Flakes was abusing the fact that Zero was throwing out a lot of fireballs and was getting grid off that and for those who don't know or for those who don't play units grid is a very important part of the function for this game as grid determines who can apply pressure who has offense who can do what off what it makes a lot of safe things unsafe and a lot of unsafe things safe so applying and using grid effectively is one of the many battles you have to face when you play units and Not that is just oh i'm up folks be right back All right, so Noctis and Otaku who? Otaku Gamer Timmy. Otaku Gamer Timmy. Yes. See, I see. And also, this came fresh across my desk today. All right. It turns out the convention sponsored us. Medals. Woo! So, here's yours. For I fighters. got a medal for yep. fighters? You got a medal for fighters. So, congratulations on that. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. A hard-earned one. Wow, it was. It was really hard. There was a lot of opponents that came through and, and tried. Very difficult. Very difficult, you know. The bracket was harsh. I had many a set to beat to try to recover through that whole bracket. <laughs> Indeed. Came by. Started off from the bottom of the bracket. You're right. Worked your way back in. All the way it. up. 100%. Oh yeah. It was a hard-fought victory. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was a lot of... Uh, power creep going on you know but yeah. you know earth's mightiest warriors made it indeed but in the end only one there can only be one it can only be one like in this we're gonna see another mika or no we're doing butt checks right boot and checks and then maybe another mika i don't know but for sure knocked us back with gordo Now, I saw an Otaku Gamer over there doing some warm-ups. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he's more warmed up than I was. Right. It always tends to help. <laughs> Most definitely. 
Okay, so Mika for sure locked it. Maybe. All right. Yep. Mika's actually pretty crazy. I don't get too much Mika practice. So it's interesting to watch and uh, kind of get that additional perspective too. They're going to go right into it here. He did the glasses push. Did you see that? You know, he's, he did it again. Oh, again. Yo, double power up. Here we go. All right, see so now, Gordo's definitely going to control a lot of the space because Miko wants to be in, right? And do those Ooh, command right throws. But she's so stubby. So she's got to figure out how to remain close. Punch Girl has to get in there. Right. Big uh -oh. giant rush down. The one thing I noticed from the Google Doc that's universal for learning how to play Mika is <laughs> she is the gorilla. Oh, really? Rushing. Well, apparently. There you go. I thought it was Wagner, but I guess it's Mika as well. Whatever works. Maybe it's the truth. Maybe everyone's a gorilla in this game. Everyone, that's the thing everybody about Eunice. Is everybody has some ridiculous nonsense in this game that they should not have. Knock this, taking the advantage. Yep. All right, see, now he can just take advantage of Grid in the back. Because, like, Gordo's got those big buttons. I don't got to worry about it. I just got to worry about you jumping in at me, which I could take advantage of by doing various anti-air moves. Ooh, try for the command throw here. I bet he thought that uh, Mika was going to block and then he was going to go for the command throw, which right. would have been uh, a risky situation to put himself in. Uh, but if Otaku was not privy to it, uh, he would have got caught for sure. I haven't seen much in regards to EX moves from uh, Mika yet. Yeah, not too much yet. Nice. And advantage goes to Noctis. Takes the first first match. Right. It was pretty quick. He definitely took advantage of the grip for sure, uh, but he didn't really need to utilize it too much. I'd like to see some more from uh, Otaku, uh, kind of controlling the space. Like, again, it's another situation where you just want to be in Gordo's face, because mm -hmm. what's he going to do about it? He's got a command throw, which you can react to on jump. Uh, oh, nice. And you can challenge his normals mostly because there's such a slow startup on him. Oh, no, missed the overhead here. Gotta pay attention to that. Up, getting your way in. Nice, another oh. overhead. Okay, uh, nice conversion here. I like this. Try oh. to go for the corner carry. Doesn't matter. That's the nice thing about Noctis is like he's very adaptive to these happy accidents that happen. Exactly. And down. Now, what are you seeing from Otaku Gamer Timmy where you feel like, oh, I need to switch this up in order to accomplish? Uh, it seems like Otaku is still trying to kind of figure this out. Um, I'm not sure of Otaku's experience as far as uh, this game in particular. Um, I mean, he's got some basic bread and butters down. It's just a matter of, like, you need to understand this matchup and understand that you really should be in control of this pace. And it just seems like he's kind of feeling out combos. So it hasn't, like, shown a real reliable bread and butter yet. So. Noctis takes it second. Hopefully you don't have three no blow-ups this entire round robin bracket. That'd be pretty unfortunate. <laughs> I've seen crazier things happen, especially I remember for last year's combo con when we did Exert Rev Two. Yeah. That's all that happened. Yikes. That but it's all that happened basically. Yeah. Like it's either, there was no splits, there was no everything, just oh. complete runaways. Right. But then again it made it that all the more competitive. Right, absolutely. I wanted. I don't want to say runaways because it was literally pixel to pixel at the end. Right. So, and look at this. Noctis just being a giant bully, and that was really good spacing on the overhead too. Because like even if uh, Otaku ended up blocking it, he was still going to be fairly safe in that situation. Right. The only thing that would have stopped him if Otaku would have woke up and like dashed in and like close that get like dash blocked, and that would have been real scary. Oh, geez, nice dash seat. Cross up. See, and that's the thing too, because I was talking about her stubby normals earlier. That's something that threw me off even while I was playing my match. Or like, you think something's gonna hit, and then it's just, oh, uh oh, just a fraction pause. out of the way. So. What happened? Got an accidental pause. 